Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be doing three Dollar Tree DIYs for spring and one of them is for Lent also. So to start with our first one, we're going to be using one of these plastic watering cans, some miscellaneous greenery and flowers and just a bundle of joy some waverly white chalk paint and apple barrel black acrylic paint some black and white buffalo check ribbon and this i got from hobby lobby for five dollars some floral foam and these are just scraps that i had i'll be using my silhouette cameo 3 and some black vinyl some transfer tape my squeegee and weeding tools and if you don't have this it's okay you can just use a black paint pen for what we're going to be writing and then my glue gun scissors wire cutters a chenille stem and my ruler so the first thing we're going to do is paint our watering can white and i really was not in love with the shape of this watering can but it was all that dollar tree had so it turns out if you paint something white it automatically becomes beautiful for some reason so i ended up loving the shape of this can afterwards and so all i did was give it two coats of the waverly white chalk paint and note to everyone if you want to avoid cracking make sure that your coats are completely dry before you move on to the second coat once my paint is completely dry then i'm going to go back in with a foam makeup sponge and i'm going to take some black paint and just go along the edges of my watering can and you kind of just let the foam brush it's not a brush it's a sponge but you just kind of let it do all the work for you I want this to look like a vintage enamelware piece so every now and then I'm going to give it a little bumpity bump so that it's not a perfectly straight line. And in the real life vintage enamelware you'll see cracks every now and then that have the black showing from underneath the white. So I just take my foam sponge and make little areas that look like cracks. After the black paint was dry, I measured to see how large to make my decal, and it comes out to four inches wide by five inches tall. So I'm gonna be using the font called The Skinny, and so I cut that out of black vinyl from my Silhouette Cameo 3, and then weeded it out and put my transfer paper on top, and then put it onto my watering can. Now this is where you can totally use your own handwriting and do those long letters that are in the Ray Dunn style where the tops of the letters are a little closer to the top as opposed to being in the middle. Now I'm gonna take my floral foam and just pop those pieces into the bottom of the watering can and then I'm going to take just a bunch of different pink florals and put those into the watering can and into the floral foam. To remove the tags, if you just pop off the flower itself and then pull the tag right up and put the flower back on, that's easier than trying to cut them off. So I could have cut these all apart from their stems and placed them in individually, but instead I just intertwined them after I put the entire branch into the foam and then moved them around until I got it to the way that I liked it. And then to cover up the hole at the top of the handle, I'm going to make a bow out of the black and white buffalo check ribbon. So the way to do that is to fold over your ribbon and I did three loops on each side and then I'm going to fold it in the middle so that the loops are the same size on both sides. And then I'm going to cut little teeny notches on the ends of both sides and then using my chenille stem I'm going to crunch it in the middle and then wrap it around and twist it in the back. And then once it's secure I'm going to 
pull apart the loops and I'll do one to the right, one to the left, and then one kind of in the center. And then I do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm gonna take my tails and I'm gonna fold that fabric over in half and then cut it at a diagonal on both sides. Then I'm gonna take the excess chenille stem and wrap that around the top of the handle of the bucket. And if you don't have a white chenille stem, you can always just hot glue that. So here it is all done. I am absolutely in love with this. I love how springy and pretty this is. I'll put a list of the different flowers that I used in this bouquet in the description box below so that if you want to recreate this, you can get the exact flowers. And if you don't have a personal cutter, I will have this decal available in my Etsy shop but you should really try your hand at using your own handwriting now some people might not like the black and white buffalo check bow for springtime but I'm an 80s girl so black and pink has always been one of my favorite combinations but for you if it's not your style you can change it up and make it your own by using whatever color ribbon works for you and your decor For our next project, we're going to be using this bamboo wreath, and I had never seen this before at Dollar Tree, but I didn't really like it, but then I thought of something that I could use it for. We're also going to be using some blooming branches, three of these incense stick holders, a wooden cross that has the galvanized metal behind it, and it's on a little stand, some regular burlap ribbon, some purple ribbon and i believe this is from walmart my friend gave it to me so i'm not 100 percent sure they do have purple ribbon at dollar tree but i couldn't find the one that i had and then as soon as i was done filming i found it of course and so the first thing we're going to do is work on these incense holders and what i did is i took my utility knife and it's super sharp because it was a brand new blade and I just kind of scored it at an angle going from top to bottom. And then I took my wire cutters and used the plier part to break that apart. I want this to have a pointed edge at the bottom and then make it wider at the top. Now I'm making this look kind of easy because I'm editing out the time that it took to do this, but you have to be very careful, first of all, because of the blade and go over that same score line a number of times before it will actually break for you. So now I'm going to get my wreath ready and I'm going to attach my blooming branches to the bottom corner. And I only had three of these branches because I used one in the DIY that I did with the three crosses. And I thought that the branches looked kind of thorny and sharp and so it reminded me of the crown of thorns. So since I only had the three, I split one of them in half so that my sides would be equal or pretty equal anyway because there's only five stems on each of the branches. 
So I just rounded them out and kind of made them in a semicircular shape so that it would go along with the wreath itself. And then I'm gonna take my paddle wire and attach those to the wreath, leaving a little area in between separated because that's where our bow's gonna go. So now I'm going to use the same fold over method that I used with my other bow, but this time I'm going to do four loops on each side because this is kind of see through fabric. And so it's also going to go underneath a smaller burlap bow that we're going to make, but we're using purple because that represents Lent and that's the season that we're going into today. And this is the time that we reflect on what's about to happen at Easter and with the passion and everything. So purple is the liturgical color for Lent. So for our burlap bow, I'm showing you another way that you can do it. And this is where you just wrap it around on top of itself on the front and back and just go back and forth. I did three loops on each side again, and then I'm going to fold it in half and go through the same motions that I did with the other bow. This is just another way of doing it. This helps especially if you have single-sided ribbon that has a pattern on one side and not on the other. And so if you don't want the back side to show in your bow, you can use this method and it won't show. So now I'm going to take my nails and attach them to the top right hand corner of the wreath. Well, it's not a corner because it's a circle, but you get the idea. And I just took my hot glue and placed the largest one at the bottom and then the middle sized one next and then the smallest one on top. Did I tell you they were nails? Well, they're nails. Okay, so now I'm going to take my burlap bow and put that on top of the purple one and then pull some of the loops through the burlap one so that you can see more of the purple. Then I took my little cross and using a very small Phillips head screwdriver, I removed the screws from the back of the cross and separated it from the galvanized metal. And I really liked what it said. It says, seek courage and strength through him. So I didn't wanna cover the lettering up, but I did wanna make the cross a bit lighter so that it would show better on top of the nails. So I just took my makeup sponge and some white chalk paint and just went around the edges. And then I took a brush and kind of whitewashed the front of it so that you could still see the words but it was a lighter wood now. And then once it was completely dry, I hot glued that to the top of my three nails and it was done. And here it is all finished and I absolutely love how this turned out. It is all things Lent. I really wanted to do something specifically for Lent and I think this really captures the mood of the season. And I just realized that I forgot to show you guys how I painted on the nails with brown acrylic paint. 
I don't know where that footage went, but all I did was took a paintbrush and went over the raw edges. So for our final project, we're gonna need two of these All Bunnies Welcome signs, a package of these terracotta pots, two skewers, some white roses, and I'm not good with plants or flowers, but these are definitely not carnations, some floral foam, two bundles of the Easter onion grass, some coordinating pretty paper, this is actually from a company called Dots. I don't even know if they're still around, but something that's cute. Some white chalk paint and celery chalk paint. Any kind of green moss. A sanding block and a piece of sandpaper. I didn't have any, so I used my rotary sandpaper. Some Mod Podge. And then my glue gun, scissors, and wire cutters. So the first thing I did was painted my terracotta pots with the Waverly White chalk paint. And the coverage on this was crazy good because it only took one coat to get complete coverage, which is funny because I wanted to stress these and I wasn't even wanting to have a solid paint job, but that's the way it turned out. I think it might have been because it was such a porous surface and then it dried like almost instantly too. So that was crazy. Anytime I'm painting pots or vases or anything like that, I like to get inside and go at least a quarter to a halfway down just in case you ever see inside. Now I'm gonna take my sign and I'm only gonna be using the little bunny cutout for this project. So you just wanna pull the staples out from the back of him and I'm going to sand him down so that I get a nice flat surface. And for my second bunny, I'm gonna be recycling him from a project I did last year before I even started my YouTube channel. So he's cute as he is, but we're gonna make him even cuter for this year. So I'm gonna save a paper plate and just pour some Mod Podge right onto my little bunny and spread it out with a foam makeup brush. And then I'm gonna take one of the patterned papers and put it on top of him and push it down with my hand and try to get as many bubbles out as I possibly can. But if there is anything, it's okay. But I just made an indentation where the edges of the wood was so that I could then, once it's dry, go back and cut it out. And you wanna be careful and make sure that you hit all of the edges of the piece of wood so that your paper will stick securely. So once the Mod Podge was dry, I cut my bunnies out and I don't know where I'm gonna put these, but sometimes there could be a chance where it can be seen from the backside. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my celery chalk paint and paint the entire backside of the bunnies. And then I'm also gonna paint my skewers that they're going to be glued to.
So now that the paint's all dry, I'm gonna go in with my small scissors and cut around the entire bunny. And in the areas where it's really super small, this is all gonna get sanded. So I go back and get those later and just cut around the larger areas first. Now I'm going to take my sanding block and going away from the edges, I'm going to sand down the larger parts where it's easy to get to. And then I'm going to go back in with my sandpaper and fold it up so that I can get into those little nooks and crannies. So now back to my pots, I took my celery paint and just using a very light hand and a pretty dried off brush, I'm gonna dry brush that paint onto the pot and then wipe it off so that it's a very subtle kind of patina looking finish. And then I'm gonna wet distress the pots and to do that, you just put some water onto a wash rag or some kind of rag and then just start rubbing it here and there, especially around the raised edges and the rims and at the bottom. And then that'll let some of that terracotta show through and give it a weathered look. So now to build these, I just put some hot glue in and added my floral foam. And I just use scrap pieces. I always have this laying around. So if you can keep from buying another piece, then that's always a good thing. So now I'm gonna take my onion grass and I'm not gonna use the eggs, but I'm gonna separate each of these stalks. And there's a little piece, it's like an end cap that comes at the top of the stem. And so you just want to remove those and then pull the little stalks right off of the stem. And so seven stems or seven stalks come on one bundle. And so I'm going to separate those and stick those all in outside and around the floral foam. So then I'm going to take some moss and then push that into some hot glue. And I just took a big old handful and stuck it in there. And then I want to have the front of this pot have grass that's lower than the back. So what I did is I just cut off some pieces of the grass and then took the leftovers that I had cut off and stuck those in with them. I didn't like the way they were finished. I cut them at a diagonal, but I thought it was a little too blunt. So I went back in and cut them down the entire blade of grass so that they were skinnier and thinner and looked more realistic. So then I went in with my hot glue and took my wooden skewers and glued the bunnies to each of those. And then I decided which one I wanted on top and which one I wanted on bottom. So one's going to be higher than the other. So once I figured that out, I broke off my skewer to the height that I wanted and stuck him in as well. Now I'm going to take some of my roses and I just cut off a short little piece about three or four inches and took three of those and put them at the base of the skewer. And sometimes you will find that these flowers will have little stitching holes on the petals. So to get rid of that, instead of changing out the whole flower, just take your scissors and cut that off. 
Then I took a couple of cotton balls and rolled them around in the palms of my hands so that they would be tighter and smaller and took some hot glue and glued those to their little bums. And then they were done. And here they are all done and I am in bunny love with them. I think they turned out so cute. I love the patterns of these papers and the softness of the green and the sanding at the edges I think just sets it over the top as far as cuteness in a non-boastful way of course. So I hope you guys like these. These were really even though it was a little time consuming, it was an easy project to do, but I think they turned out adorable. I hope you guys enjoyed these projects and if you did I would love if you would give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think I love hearing from everybody even though sometimes it takes me a bit to get back to you and if you're not already I would so appreciate if you would hit that big red subscribe button and you will know every single time I release another video so Today is also Ash Wednesday when you're watching this. I'm actually recording on Fat Tuesday. So I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.